Hey, this is old okay. This is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to do our review on Men in Black 3. Yeah, in we saw the 3D version, not the IMAX. We would have seen the IMAX, but we can't find an IMAX theater like within about 20 miles of us. We're in Los Angeles. You know, I think one of the biggest challenges with Men in Black 3 is the number of theaters it's going to be at. Because for a major movie like this, Remember, we've gone to where you could see a midnight screening, right? And you have your choices. Yeah. How hard was it to find a Men in Black 3 in IMAX uh, or 3D opening yeah. night? Oh, God, it was not the easiest thing. What happened to it, Men in Black 3 may be on like 4,200 screens, but it's on, it's sharing screen time with other movies. So a lot of them have to do their screen time with Sony movies, I think, because they're the only ones they can move. So the challenging part is when you look at the numbers and they're comparing Men in Black three versus Men in Black one and two is it's, it's, not, it's not doing as well. Because first of all, it's not showing as much. Well, no yeah, matter what the screen no time is. No matter what it is, because it really is okay, you can fit you know, like a like it, in some places it doesn't even start running until four o'clock at night. Do you think part of this has to do with it being Memorial Day weekend versus I know like you mentioned before that Will Smith used to own the Fourth of July weekend. Yeah. Do you think it's all in the timing? Um, it's in, in, oh yeah, it's got off on timing because um, Avengers is eating up. They're not pulling Avengers out of theaters, mm. and because it's setting in, they hadn't counted on the Avengers being so big. And what it was, they didn't want to run into Spider-Man or um, or um, or Dark Knight because they thought it would kill it. But you know, but uh, like we we're talking about, uh, you know, like if you if, don't expect to see Men in Black or Men in Black 2 if you go to Men in Black 3 because it's a standalone movie. I mean, you'll see some similarities, right, with 3 versus 1 and 2 because they are the same series. But when he says they stand alone, you know how a lot of times you do a movie and you see Men in Black 1, then it goes to Men in Black 2, right? And then if you come to Men in Black 3, if you miss the first two, then you're really kind of lost. No, on this one, you're not because it's not really sequential. In that? It's, it's a pre, it's a prequel, pre sequel, mm -hmm. whatever they prequel? call it. Prequel? Prequel. Because it's basically explaining how things mm -hmm. came about. Mm -hmm. Which basically, by the time you see this, you have already seen the movie and had all the reviews. But basically, it does feature um, Will Smith as agent, Jay and Tommy Lee Jones as agent K in, in roles, but Zet Riptor has been killed. And he's been replaced. Yeah, they by open him. up with his funeral, practically. <clears throat> yeah, but Emma Thompson has replaced him and Josh Brolin. Uh, <coughs> plays the younger Asian K and Jermaine Clement plays Boris the Animal, which is actually the weakest part in the movie is the villain. You know, I you know I don't know if it's so much of how he played it or if the character. I mean, I know in the other Men in Black one and two, it's like the villain comes out and it's just kind of like the first one, the Bug or yeah. Edgar, right? It, it's just like, you know there was. We well, were just obnoxious little thug with this. Yeah, and or um, what was the next one? Selena. Yeah. You know, putting on black too. You know, she was, you know, hot, sexy, and a real bitch. <laughs> but this guy is just—he's um, irritating. I mean, he's an English comedian that is going over the top trying to play an English villain. First of all, the English play villains better than anybody else because they got that arrogant. But this guy. It's just he, something lacking. Oh, he, he's basically a total comedian, but. Um, but Phil, I'll go to my continued gripe about these things. The film was a 3D conversion. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can do a 3D conversion if you shoot the film to be in 3D, and no, and and the people that are writing it know you can't go, whoosh, whoosh, you know, and then like that, and you can't do it. The camera run, you can room room room, and the camera mm -hmm. can zoom in and out. You can't do that in a 3D conversion. Part of it is there are times when 3D is really good at movies. In fact, at the beginning, we saw the the clip for. Spider-Man, oh, which looks Spider like it'll be phenomenal in 3D. I mean, right? I'm going to tell you, Spider-Man, they do, it comes at you. They're throwing <laughs> things, they're deliberately, whoosh, whoosh, what's the word? 3D work well. 3D, I'm going to explain it for the people that don't invest 3D, but I've been around for a long time, but she was there, shoot low and shoot close. Right, so part of it is if the scene is really far away, 3D is not going to add a whole lot no. to it. And, yeah. uh, and a way to tip off whether it's a 3D conversion or a 3D is, a 3D movie as a as a point of view. Basically, everything is basically in focus. No matter if it's there or here, it's in focus. But if it's if something is out of focus, it's a conversion. So, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, what we're talking about uh, basically here's a big problem that I, that I we had with it is Will Smith is basically sort of muscle bound oaf now. 
Well, you know, it's been 10 years since Men in Black 2 came out. Yeah. So, of course, like all of us, he's gotten a little bit older. But he's not, I mean, remember, he was... He's not as fluid in his movements. Well, he, he was a lot skinnier. He wasn't really, he didn't have muscle. He was just a lanky, like, he was very lanky. But now he's basically just wall-to-wall -wall muscle. You know, like that. He's more muscle than he was an iRobot. Mm -hmm. But his problem is he's doing iRobot at, you know, he's doing he's doing Hancock, I robot, and all these things one after another. We need to be athletic. So, but uh, but uh, one of the other things is that uh, you know, but his voice is deep, and he can't play the hip character anymore because it you know, just doesn't come off the same. And then Tommy Lee Jones. A lot of the critics have complained about Tommy Lee Jones basically sleepwalking. Well, first of all, he's a major. He's a star. Of, he is. He's, he's got an Academy Award folks and things. He should be. He should have got more of a part than what he did. So they accused, well, he knew he wasn't actually in the movie, so he just sleepwalked through it. No, he's 66 years old. It looks like he is 66 years old. He's very slow. Everything is nothing, you know, like, like we know what they're doing. They're setting up Josh Brolin's, aren't they? Oh, they definitely are. In fact, we're sitting there thinking, like, when they come out with the next Men in Black 4, Who's going to get more screen time? I'm thinking it's Josh Brolin versus Tommy Lee Jones. Because he does, he does actually what we would say is an Academy Award winning rendition of Tommy Lee Jones, right down to the man's voice. Well, I thought, I mean, it, it was it was so close that I thought he was lip syncing him at first, right? Because the voice, he seemed so right on. And then I looked at him like, no, he's not lip syncing. And then I looked at him going, because see, part of it is beforehand. I didn't sit there and look to see who was playing what, right? So I thought, well, did they put makeup on Tommy Lee Jones to make him look younger, put him on a mask, or, but no, no it's no, Josh it's Brolin. Young, but what you do, you want to try, when Josh Brolin is on the screen, close your eyes and listen, you will think of Tommy Lee Jones. I thought it there. was. Because, like, I went out, or you go out and make a, go out and make a, a run to get the, the refill on your drink, you, you, as you're coming in, you swear that it was Jones on the screen without seeing him, and, and mm -hmm. you walk, oh, it's Tommy, that's not Tommy Lee Jones, but... Um, it's just Brolin, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, like I said, the, the, we, the, the, it's, 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 it's disappointing in some areas if you've seen one and two, but if you haven't seen one and two, it's a good it's a good action movie, it's a standalone feature. It, it explains why they are like they are right now. Yeah, why? Because Tommy, you know, is, you know, you know Tommy, uh, you know, Josh Brolin is really the star of this movie. He he, he outshines the effects. He outshines the he outshines his role is what he does. And basically establishes himself. Okay, what was it? He did um, Nixon. He, he, what was it? No, he played George Bush, didn't he, in, one of the, in a movie? No, for, I don't know. I, have I to think look. he played George Bush for um, you know in a film, which people, which basically he nailed George Bush. So which one we're looking at that one? But he does um, Wall Street. Like, George Bush. Yeah, he played George Bush. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel Kim Live. Yeah, no, he plays. He, 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 he's nailing characters basically. He, he is, was born in 1968. Yeah, which is the year before the movie is set. So, but no, he is nailing. Oh, he played W. W. Yeah, George. He, he is nailing the characters that he that he's nailing these characters he's playing, which means he's got an ungodly. I mean, his father. I worked with his father on the Virginia, on uh, the Virginian, and his father really, you know, is really a great actor in his own he, right. But, you know what? But he, what's really, really impressive is a lot of times when when actors play characters, they're playing them and that other person is not in the movie. Here, you're playing a character younger and you're both in the same movie. Yeah, they, so, I mean, think about a challenge as an actor's part. And especially, remember when you talked about when we closed our eyes, you really, we thought it was Tommy Lee. I thought, he, remember I said, I thought he was mouth lip syncing. Lip -syncing. You know, he just he has the vocal inflection. I think part of the fact that he grew up in Hollywood and basically, he picked up. He basically, growing up among all the other actors, he picked up their voices, mm. and he's able. You know, he, he's uh, he, he's able to do the. And I just wonder how many characters that this gentleman is going to be able to play over the next thirty years, that were somebody. Uh, you know, that were. You know, some. You know, like you want to do a remake, you pick Josh Brolin to play the character because I Josh Brolin is able to become a chameleon to look. Josh Brolin looks nothing like Tommy Lee Jones. Totally nothing like Tommy Lee Jones, but 
You swear with just a little bit of makeup that he was Tommy Lee well, you know, Jones. When I first, when you first came on screen and he started talking, I thought maybe they just put Tommy Lee in a mask, right? That's I know, but it wasn't Tommy. Are they just you know? They, are they did? Or what, they lip -sync? Are they did what they did in Tron with Jeff Bridges? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was made, made Jeff Bridges look younger. No. That is Tommy Lee Jones. That is that's that, Josh that, Brolin. That Josh Brolin is Tommy Lee Jones. See, this is what happens when you go and see it and you have a, you know, God look and see everybody who's playing the characters. Do you get some of these surprises like that? Yeah. Uh, and I, then, what was, oh, the other person we saw, he really liked the Griffin guy. Oh, yeah. He's, uh, basically, he looks nothing like the character he's playing in real life. I know. Mike Stolberg, who... To me, it's like he's been in other movies. Oh, that yeah, people have but seen. he is definitely, when you look at him, he is a much younger looking person. He's also, you know, in Hitchcock. He's in Lincoln. and um, He was in Hugo. The Walk Empire he's in. And Hugo. Oh, I remember that character in Hugo now. So he was in Hugo, but he is, uh, what, what, what country is he from again? He's from Long Beach, California. <laughs> Another one and born in 68, but. He uh, actually has been nominated for Golden Globe. No, but he is a, he's a chameleon also. And he is, uh, well, he's not a come okay, the gentleman playing um, playing Boris the animal is a comedian, a straight comedian, does nothing but comedic roles. But this gentleman is an actor's actor. I mean, if you look yeah. at how serious everything is. Well, he bored Walk Empire for 24 episodes, okay. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Which means he played a, a thug, so. Yeah. But. Um, but he was he was definitely the sparkle of, he was the sparkle of the movie, and then there were times when you saw Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith have that sparkle together like you had seen them like in well, yeah Men when they're Black together Wanted. then the movie does when okay, when they're on when they're on because they play off well another I mean they they they, they you know they should have been working more but as I under, I guess I understand that the problem has been Will Smith for a decade. What happened was Will Smith has spent the last four years trying to win an Academy Award, so he basically quit making movies that weren't going to be Oscar-nominated things. So. It's like the sad part is, is it took ten years between when Men in Black Two and Men in Black Three. Yeah, and in that time, Tommy Lee Jones basically got old, and Will Smith became indifferent. But I'm really glad they were both still in this movie because there's so many times that there's other movies that come out. Where they come out with the next movie, and you've got a whole different cast of characters, yeah. right? But the trick is, this also this was actually meant because it's a standalone film. It was meant to be a, a, mm -hmm. the lead to a sequel based off of this movie, not the other two, with the characters introduced in this movie that had nothing to do with the other two. I mean, they just let the worms are basically got a they're in the background, but everything else that was the other two movies is missing. Um, they did throw in a head not being knocked off though, but. Uh, Mm -hmm. But uh, it, this movie has to make um, eight hundred million dollars. Most of that coming from out of this country, because what will happen is it's only it's going to end up opening week mm -hmm. making less than Men in Black Two made, and Men in Black Two didn't make as much as one, mm -hmm. and it cost two hundred they estimate two hundred fifty three hundred million dollars. Wow! It means that it has to do it has to pick up. Six to seven hundred million dollars out of this country. Well, I'm hoping it's having some long legs because it definitely, when we went to look at the movie screens, it's not as um, there's not as many available times for you to go ahead and watch it, which was really kind of frustrating. Yeah, for I us. keep harping on that because a movie, okay, movie audiences traditionally like to have a long run that they can pick from. They don't like to be niched into an area. I mean, well, like we wanted to see the IMAX version. Not within 20 miles of us. This is Which is of, crazy. We live in L.A. We live in L.A. and mm -hmm. the nearest IMAX that, that basically, okay, they, they got non-3D movies playing at IMAX that they thought were going to do well and tanked. Every mm -hmm. one of them tanked. You mean you can't even get, okay, we can't even, we couldn't even get the Avengers within 20 miles of us. I know. So we did end up seeing a 3D movie, but not a 3D IMAX. No, and it, it really is a different experience than an IMAX version. So we try to see the IMAX as well as the 3D version. We can tell you that uh, 2D versus 3D, well, this film probably does look better in 3D than it will in 2D, but mm -hmm. 2D will convert. It will convert you and watch it on television. Yeah. Because it was shot in 2D. But um, basically, um, we were we were got awful disappointed in Boris. The 
the animal because he, is, he just doesn't fit in with the it, There was the just something kind of missing. Well, he's, he's, a, Brit he's, he's a, a British actor, a comedian playing a caricature of, of, he's playing a caricature of British villains in horror movies. Do you think it's the character itself or the way he played the character? It, it, so, there was just no, something I think totally it's just, he is a comedian playing a, okay, he's an actor but he does comedic roles and I think <laughs> he was trying to, to do something with the character and Will Smith, since Will Smith was actually in charge, Will Smith let the comedy, let the comedy comedian do it, where he did nothing, whereas we said that Michael Schilberg with Griffin took his role and ran with it. Yeah. So, but um, it basically is the film we pay money to see. We already did. Yeah, okay. You heard us grumbling that there weren't enough time choices. Yeah, we grumbled about that because we got, we managed to get there like five minutes before. Basically, you didn't even have time to, you, got your, you barely got your popcorn and drink before the movie started. But uh, uh, were we disappointed in what we saw? Um, it was a little lackluster, but I'm really glad I saw it. And would I, would I, knowing what I know, would I see it again? Yes. Yeah, and then and, and don't go into it thinking you're going to see a sequel to one and two. It just is not going to happen. This is a movie meant to introduce new movies. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, but they, uh, you know, you get your okay. We're basically the individual performances, as we said, by the second and third leads, especially Brolin and Michael Schuberg as Griffin, and the effects and the action mm -hmm. did make it worth the money. Yeah, because really this did. is a movie that the background players. Okay, a, a movie is often more more than just the main leads. It's everybody else. This movie, it was everybody else and the main leads. Mm -hmm. So, I guess until our next movie review, this is Old Cam. And this is not a screen ticket. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. For more information, you can go to www.montevolo.net on the net. Or mbnnewsvideoweb.com. And wherever you're watching us, subscribe to us, follow our daily newscast in 3D. Um, follow us on, actually it's like us on Facebook under Monty Bubbles Network or follow us on Twitter at Monty Bubbles. And thank you once again for over 250 million links on the internet.